That was sort of the, the cool application. Um, but the theory, and this is really the important part, is that homographies map from planes to planes. And this allows us to compute what a different image plane would look like from the same center of projection. So we can build mosaics uh, by projecting a set of images that are all taken from the, the same camera center. And in, in general, what we're doing is we're, we're, gonna be, we're working more in this uh, projective relationship between um, uh, image planes. So that ends the lesson on homographies and mosaics. Uh, that was kind of the cool part with a very gentle introduction to projective geometry. Now we're going to do a little bit more serious, or next lesson I'd say, we're going to do a little more serious uh, conversation about projective geometry and the duality between points and lines. How often do you get to use the word duality in a, at a party? I mean, seriously. Uh, we're going to talk about the duality between uh, points and lines, and that will help us get to the relationship between sort of arbitrary cameras that you might, I don't know, want to do stereo matching between or some other alignment between those views. Welcome back to Intro to Computer Vision. The last time we talked about uh, homogeneous transforms and said how they were a form of a projective transform. And we showed for how homographies are your best friend. They allow you to map from uh, one plane to another and to be able to map image planes and that allowed us to do panoramas and other kinds of cool uh, things. Today what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a little heavier in the projective geometry stuff. It's actually a short lesson and we're doing this for two reasons, well, three reasons. One is uh, no self-respecting computer vision person should not know something about projective geometry. So you can say you know something about projective geometry and impress your, uh, your parents. Uh, more importantly, or, or maybe significant others if you're dating a nerd, uh, more importantly, um, we're going to use them a little bit when we talk about the relationship between uh, multiple views because uh, projective geometry is just a very convenient way of representing the projection operator, which after all is how images are made. All right, so why projective geometry? And we're going to show you uh, some of the math. All right, so what is the geometric intuition of using homogeneous coordinates? Well, basically, the idea is that we're going from a ray in space is mapped to a point in the image. So here you see a ray uh, that intersects the image plane at uh, z equals 1. And the idea is that every point x, y, so every point x, y on the image plane at z equals 1 is represented by this ray. So you see this ray here, right? And it intersects the image plane at x, y, 1. But any point on this ray, Sx, Sy, S, would in intersect the, uh, when projected through the center of projection, would intersect the image plane at the same location. And that's what it means to be projectively similar. Okay? And that, that's the, the relationship between sort of these rays and the points in the image. So we already know about sort of going between homogeneous coordinates and regular coordinates. Uh, so in 2D, for example, we take a 2D point, x, y, to make it homogeneous, we just add a, a, a 1 uh, to it and become a homogeneous coordinate. That last coordinate can be thought of as the thing that tells you about the scale. So when you go from homogeneous coordinates to regular, you just divide by that scale value. That's what's uh, shown here. But homogeneous coordinates actually allow us to do a lot more. Uh, in particular, they're going to give us a natural way of thinking about lines. And this time we mean two-dimensional lines. So here we have our standard equation for a two-dimensional line, ax plus by plus c equals zero. And what's nice is in homogeneous coordinates, it can be thought of as just this dot product essentially, right? It's uh, abc transpose times xy1, or I should say multiplied by xy1. And when you think of the line that way, A, B, and C can just be thought of as being uh, the component uh, of the, the unit vector in the direction of the normal between the origin and the line. And then every point on that line, when you dot it with that normal, has to be a distance D away, so that, so that would be minus D. But the thing to think about also is it's saying that the normal, A, B, C, is perpendicular to the point x, y, 1, or to the ray that defines x, y, 1. So what's this deal having to do with perpendicular, perpendicularity? Get that out in one word, all right? And in fact, this perpendicular relationship is key to, to using projective geometry to define our, our points and lines. So to understand this, this uh, perpendicular relationship, let's look at the projective space. So what does a line in the image correspond to in projective space? Well, 
a line really is defined by this plane of ray that's intersecting the image plane. And that plane is defined, like all planes are, by a normal. And this is that same normal, ABC. So all the rays that are perpendicular to that normal form the line. Because the line is really just a plane in this projective space intersecting the uh, image plane. Cool, right? It gets better. Oh, and uh, we can write this very simply in the same vector notation I was showing you before. So it's essentially, in fact, you know what, let's, let's say L transpose P if I wanted to write it that way, right? So that's in vector notation. And the thing to think about is that in projective geometry and in this homogeneous coordinate system, a line is also a homogeneous three vector. So a point is a homogeneous three vector, but a line is also a homogeneous three vector. In fact, this relationship that a point is a three vector and a line is a three vector is what's going to get to this duality between points and lines. And as we said, a line is a homogeneous uh, three vector, which is defined by that normal to the plane, and it is perpendicular to every point P that's on that plane. And what does it mean to be perpendicular to a point? Well, in projective geometry, being perpendicular to a point means that you're actually perpendicular to the ray that defines that point, and that's what gives us some of that duality. Given these points and lines are both three vectors and we have this uh, duality, suppose I have two points, P1 and P2. Now remember, points are actually these rays, P1 and P2. How would you solve for the line that goes between them? Okay, so you know in algebra, if I gave you two points, you would figure out your formula for line. Well, in projective geometry, it's actually pretty easy. Since L here is just perpendicular to both P1 and P2, well, you remember how to get a perpendicular vector given two other vectors. You just take their cross product. Okay, so L is equal to P1 cross P2. That's it. No problem. Okay, and L is the normal to the plane. So that plane is the line. So the way I get the line is I just cross the two points. Very easy. Let's keep going. What is the intersection of two lines? Okay, so remember now, I've got a line L1 and L2, and remember that they're actually planes, and what I'm showing you here are the lines that are made up of the planes, uh, where the planes intersect the image plane. So the L1 plane gives you this, the L2 plane gives you that. Okay, well, just a little bit of thinking here, and you realize if the point P is perpendicular to L1, and point P is perpendicular to L2, okay, then what I need is a line that is perpendicular, or, or I need a point whose ray is perpendicular to L1 and L2. All right? Well, that's easy. So just as we had before, in order to find the intersection, in order to find the line that spans the two points, we took their cross product to find the line. In order to find the point that's the intersection of two lines, I just take the cross product again. So the points and lines, as I said, they form a dual in projective space, and that means really given any formula, I can sort of switch back and forth between what are the points and what are the lines. So when I told you that uh, uh, L transpose P equals zero, and I said L was the line and P was the point, well, that's just because L is for line and P is point. If this was some other language where L stood for point and P stood for line, you'd all be really confused. But basically what it would mean is that I was thinking of one is the line and the other is the point. We're going to make use of this uh, not in the next lesson, but in the one later when we talk about fundam fundamental matrices, where, just to, to give you forward-looking a little, Remember that if I have a point in a stereo image, it has to appear somewhere on a line in the other, that's the epipolar line, and vice versa, these pair of epipolar lines. So projective geometry will make it real easy to go between points and lines. So just uh, reviewing in homogeneous coordinates, given two points, P1 and P2, if I ask you to find the line, no problem, just take their cross product, L is P1, P2. No algebra required. Well, than doing a cross product, no thinking about lines equations or something that Mrs. Murphy taught you in eighth grade about how to go from, nope, you just take the cross product. Likewise, if I have two lines, uh, A1x, B1y, C1 equals zero, uh, A2x plus B2y plus C2 equals zero, and I want to know the intersection of those two lines, that actually took a little bit of work in Mrs. Murphy's class, right? If I gave you the equation of two lines and I told you to find their intersection, you had to think about, well, I have to 
sort of make them equal and solve these two sums. No, you just cross them. You know why Mrs. Murphy didn't teach you that? She didn't know. It's a long story about algebra teachers. Anyway, cool. Uh, here's a quiz. How can I tell whether a point, P, is on a line L in the image? Okay, so I give you a line and I give you a point. How can I tell? Well, that's easy. I can just, A, take the cross product and see if that's zero. Okay, B, no, 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 no. You want to take the dot product and see if that's zero. C, check, they're both three vectors, right? So I can add them and check them if the magnitude of the sum is greater than one. Thinking about it this way, I have some point P uh, in the middle there, right? That's projective ray is in that plane and it's therefore perpendicular to the original line. So basically you would just take the dot product between P and L and if that's zero then that point P is on the line. So the answer is B I think. I think that's what I said before. Isn't that right? Isn't that right Megan? B? Yes. Yes. She's right. She's paying attention. To finish our little tutorial on um, projective geometry, talk about something that's really more a vocabulary issue. There's this notion of ideal points and ideal lines. So ideal points come this way. We said that points are the intersection of a ray from the origin hitting the image plane. Okay, fine, no problem. And all the rays will hit that plane unless what? Unless the ray is parallel to the image plane. If the ray is parallel to the image plane, where does it intersect the image plane? We answered this before. We said you had to go, they intersect out in infinity. Remember you had to go ask somebody high in the Himalayas uh, about why that's true? That's the second time. The joke was so good the first time I thought I'd use it a second time. Anyway, but the idea is that uh, this notion of an ideal point is essentially a point at infinity. And the way you get a point at infinity is that you have uh, z, the, the, the last term, it's x, y, zero. Scale being zero gives you a point at infinity. And if you want to think about that, what happens when you divide by zero? x and y blow up and, and they go to infinity. So that's an ideal point. And the problem with an ideal point is that the ray that's supposed to define it is parallel to the image plane. Well, what about a line where the normal that defines the plane is parallel to the image plane? And that's shown here. It's a little difficult to see. Uh, but here's our normal right here, and you'll notice it has a z value of zero, okay? So it's parallel to the image plane. Well, that's actually okay. What it means is that the plane that it defines is also going to be perpendicular to the image plane, which means it's going to go right through the origin. So the ideal line corresponds to an image that go through uh, the origin or the principal point, and that's typically in the middle of our images, but remember, you your images might be offset. So an ideal point is off at infinity. An ideal line goes through the origin. We've been doing mostly our projective geometry here thinking about images. So we're talking about 2D projective uh, geometry. So our homogeneous coordinates are three long. Well, you can naturally extend this to 3D as well. Um, remember the equation of a plane, AX plus BY plus CZ plus D equals zero. So the homogeneous coordinate is now just a four vector, WX, WI, WZ, W. But of course, we've already seen that, right? When, my, when we first introduced uh, extrinsic uh, coordinates and we talked about combining rotation and translation, we introduced this notion of the four vector. And so in the two-dimensional case, we had a duality between points and lines because they were both represented by uh, four-dimensional vectors. In 3D, we have a duality between a plane whose normal uh, is A, B, C, D, okay, that's the dot product, is represented by a four vector and a point. So instead of points and lines like it is in 2D, it's points and planes um, in 3D. And the projective transforms, instead of three by threes, are just four by fours. So I wrote here that P prime equals TP, okay? Well, that's just the four by four transformations that we had seen before. So we've, since we've already uh, seen that, we're not gonna talk much more about it. Going forward, like I said, when we talk about fundamental, fundamental matrix, we'll talk about projective geometry in the 2D case using the three vectors. All right. That ends today's uh, relatively short lesson. We just, uh, a flavor of projective geometry. There are entire, as I say, books, 
There are entire lifetimes dedicated to projective geometry, mostly in France. They've got this thing about it. Uh, but in particular,